When was the last time you scheduled your doctor's appointments? When was the last time you visited a physician? When was the last time you got like tested? Hey, 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 guys, thanks for tuning in to Journey to Purpose with me, Erica Lasan. And this week, I'm really stoked for the conversation because I feel like it is one that anyone who's on a journey to purpose really needs to have with themselves. And it's about taking care of yourself. All right. How well are you taking care of yourself now? In a moment of full transparency, I'm going to let you guys know that this conversation didn't come at random, okay? It happened because I had to have a little heart-to-heart -heart with myself this weekend and thinking about how well I'm taking care of myself. I had a, a girl, a girl, a sis you could do better moment. And just thinking about um, some things that I'd been putting on the back burner. One of them being scheduling my doctor's appointments. And the more I thought about this and why I hadn't yet scheduled my doctor's appointment, I thought that this was probably a conversation that would be um, beneficial for you all as well. How intentional are you being about scheduling your appointments or even doing a daily check-in about how your body feels? Whether it be getting your physicals done, mammograms if you're at that stage or age in your life, doing your pap smears, getting your yearly uh, annual checkups for things like STIs and all of those other things, the whole nine. The point is you need to be checking in on your health and wellness. As a joy strategist, in some ways, I'm also a little bit of a wellness coach. I don't like really identify wholly with that because like I don't really study nutrition or things like that, anything like that. But I am someone who wholly believes in advocating for yourself. And when it comes to your health, your wellness, your mental health and all of the other things and I think that one of the easiest ways to even begin on that journey of understanding yourself and knowing yourself and knowing your body better is to do a check-in over the past couple of months I've noticed that like my back was hurting it, I would wake up in the morning super stiff and I would do my yoga and sometimes I'd feel a lot better about it but then I also noticed not too long ago that I have a little like lumpy situation back here when I went to the doctor a couple years ago, they said that it was just fatty tissue. Bet. That's cool. But something that I have noticed over the past couple of months is that now that area of my body where it didn't really hurt before, I didn't even notice that the thing was there. Now it feels very achy when I wake up. So for the past three months, I've written on my to-do list, scheduled doctor's appointment, get physical. But ask me what I haven't done schedule the doctor's appointment. I have yet to get my physical. And so as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about why I haven't done this yet. And this may be a conversation that some of you guys um, have with yourself often where you have something that you know you need to do for yourself, but because of life and all of the responsibilities that you have on a regular basis, for some reason or another, you and prioritizing yourself and the thing that you need to do for yourself somehow makes itself further and further and further down the list. If this is something that happens to you, trust and believe you are not alone because it happens to me all the time. And it's because I love taking care of people. But at the same time, you can't take care of everyone else without first taking care of yourself. And I know that this sounds very, very selfish, but I always say that self-care and caring for yourself and prioritizing your wellness, your mental wellness and understanding yourself is one of the most selfless things that you can do. Why? Because the moment that you're able to take care of yourself, you put yourself in a better position to take care of everyone else around you. In thinking about this conversation and why I had yet to schedule my doctor's appointment, though it had been on my daily to-do list for the past three months, I came up with a list of reasons um, that I needed to consider for myself. And maybe these are some things that you can relate to as well. Um, one of the first being programming and learned behavior. Self-sacrificing is something that I think is so highly applauded in women and it's not even something that's intentional it can be said that a woman who is willing to take care of everyone else before herself that's a good woman that's something that I've heard myself a lot growing up when you think about it if this person is always putting themselves last what happens if something happens to that person who's gonna take care of everyone then hmm hmm 
Hmm. I'll wait. <laughs> the answer is, well, eventually they'll probably have to either learn how to take care of themselves or they'll figure it out. But that shouldn't have to be the case. All right. In the same way you're caring for other people, you should be able to care for yourself. As I'm mentioning programming and learned behavior, I want you guys to understand that a lot of times this is stuff that is passed down, okay? It's like inherently learned behavior because it's what we've seen before us. It's what we've learned from the people, the women before us. And even with them, when I say this, I don't want to make it sound as though um, it's something that was done maliciously. Obviously not because it was programming that they also learned from the people before them but the beautiful thing in understanding yourself and knowing your journey to purpose is that you understand that you have the gift of choice and once you know better you can do better so as I started to learn that I was going into the same practice of taking care of everyone else and then I can begin to focus on myself I realized that I could disrupt this behavior which is part of the reason why I'm having this conversation with you all because now I'm very cognizant of the fact that girl simply scheduling the doctor's appointment not even going <laughs> to see the doctor itself has been a thing for me if I'm scheduling appointments for everyone else then I also need to be scheduling appointments for myself at the same time um, and if anything if something doesn't work out in terms of timing I could always just reschedule but at least there is a um at least there's something on the calendar so that i don't forget myself <laughs> okay how many of you guys are forgetting yourself another thing that i came up with in terms of understanding why i kept putting this to do off was the fact that i felt like i did not have the time and let me tell you guys something who the more i sat with that thought the more I realized that this was a subconscious and unconscious conversation of scarcity. Not feeling as though I had enough time or not feeling as though I have enough time because that is something that comes up for me a lot if I'm being completely honest with you guys as a full-time stay-at-home mom, as a full-time creative entrepreneur, and as someone who just like generally loves people and wants to help all the time, understanding that I feel like there's so much to do and there's so much work to do, but also understanding that the moment I begin to engage with that conversation, I'm engaging in a conversation of scarcity. Before I go ahead and get distracted, let me spit some truth about scarcity mindset and being a child of God. Let me tell you something, as a child of God, scarcity mindset is a straight up lie because we serve a God of abundance. God is so abundant in everything that he does and everything that he's created, including how he's made you and what he has made available to you. So the moment you become very clear about the fact that you may be operating with scarcity mindset, know that it is time to start feeding yourself some truth. We are abundant creatures because we serve an abundant God. But also when we consider time and our relationship to time, if you are a child of God, then you believe in eternal life, which means that you can't have a scarcity mindset around time because no matter time you have, whether it's here on this earth or otherwise, you know that your time is not limited. Like your body, the vessel that you may hold your spirit and your soul in may pass at some point, but you will live forever. <laughs> I hope that this helps you guys manage your conversation with scarcity if it involves elements of time as it does and has um, in the past for me. Does this make sense? I hope it makes sense. All right, back to the message. <laughs> The conversation around scarcity really wasn't so much around not having time because of needing to do things for the people around me, but it really came down to research and feeling as though I didn't have the time to research these new doctors, researching the doctors to have the physical appointment with because um, it's extra <laughs> and it does take time. Reading the reviews, finding out who they're affiliated with, understanding like what their qualifications are because if you're going to put your health in someone's hands you want to make sure that they're actually going to be someone who is going to do right by you but also understanding that part of my experience um 
as a black woman is making sure that the doctors that I um, work with are people who also understand my experience as a black woman. I also realized that another part of the reason why I was putting it off was because I was thinking of where I would leave the kids. <laughs> because if you guys don't know, I am with my kids all the time. Aria will be going to kindergarten this year, so that will give me three hours without her <laughs> but otherwise I still have Jace and it's a full-time job and anytime I want to do anything um, it's just a known thing that I'm gonna have a plus two and one place that you don't want to have to bring your kids is with you to the physician's office so having that conversation of where I was going to leave the kids or getting child care for the kids during those hours was a conversation that I was having with myself that was also adding to this scarcity mindset then there's something else that I realized is a consideration especially if you're someone who doesn't have health care um, the cost <laughs> Because going to the doctor can be expensive. If you're someone who doesn't have um, insurance or if you don't have good insurance, uh, it can add up very quickly. And as someone who's a creative entrepreneur, thankfully my husband Nicholas works and so we get um, insurance. We have health insurance and we actually have really good health insurance. For those people who don't have health care, this is probably a conversation or a consideration that comes up a lot. Because visiting the doctor and just checking in on your regular checkups can be very very expensive something else that could keep you from taking care of yourself is just having a fear of what could be <laughs> just fear of the unknown fear of things being discovered fear of things being observed or results coming back from evaluations that you may or may not need to get one of the biggest ways to make sure that you continue to be healthy is to get your routine checkups tying this all back to the journey to purpose the first step in your journey to purpose is understanding and recognizing just how precious you are as an individual, as a woman, um, but more importantly, as a child of God. You are so precious and you are so loved and your life matters. It matters so much. As women and entrepreneurs, it is so easy to put the needs of others before ourselves, our friends, our family members, our clients. Not taking care of yourself actually does yourself a disservice because you're not showing up wholly and fully for everyone else, which means you're also not showing up at your highest capacity as a partner in your relationships, as a parent to your children, or even as a business owner or entrepreneur to your clients if you are not showing up wholly and fully because you're depleted and it's not because we don't care about ourselves but it's really sometimes because we care about everyone else so much I mean think about your family members you love your children so you'll do whatever is needed to take care of them um, if you're in a relationship you love your partner you love your spouse so you want to cater to them because you care for them so much if you're someone who owns a business you care about your clients you want them to have optimal results you want them to be so served to the fullest capacity and if you're the one that's doing all of these things you will do whatever is necessary to make sure that at the end of the day they get what it is that they need but what about what you need what you need to do is take care of yourself and understanding that your ability to care for yourself, understanding your needs and your wants and being able to um, carry out those things is not a selfish act. It's actually a selfless act and it allows you to pour more love, more energy, more consideration, more joy into the lives of all of those people that I mentioned earlier. So as you begin to take care of yourself and prioritize your health and wellness and you do your routine checkups, scheduling your appointments, you're actually able to keep track of your journey to health and making sure that you are keeping track of any changes that are happening over time, but also making sure that all your levels are good. And keeping up with your appointments also helps you know what's working and what's not working as it relates to your journey to health um, and prioritizing yourself on this journey to purpose. So I want to give you guys a couple of ways that you can begin to do this um, and just doing the basic stuff. Listen to your body and what it needs. Listen to your body and give it what it needs. And sometimes this 
journey to health, this beginning to understand yourself, this journey to self-care starts off with the simplest things, some of the most basic needs. And there are things that we often neglect um, that really then lead to bigger issues. Begin with simple things like making sure that you're drinking an adequate amount of water each day. The recommended amount of water to drink each day is 64 ounces, but understand that that's just a general guideline, okay? It really depends on your body. It really depends on your lifestyle and what it is that you do on a regular basis. Water is really the elixir of life. And it's one of life's greatest resources, if not the greatest resource, because without water, we all die. <laughs> without water, nothing is sustainable. Everyone wants to drink from the fountain of youth so that they can look younger and more revitalized and rejuvenated. Let me tell you, the fountain of youth is simple water. Drink your water. <laughs> Make sure that you are stretching, that you are sweating daily, and that you are getting adequate sleep. Three S's, okay? Stretch, sweat, sleep. And the reason why these things are so important is because stretching is actually really awesome for making sure that your muscles operate at top notch capacity. All right. Um, it's necessary because if you don't stretch your muscles, then you hold a lot of tension, which can lead to a lot of other things, which is actually how I think this knot in my back started um, because I wasn't stretching as much. And when I do stretch, I feel an immediate difference. Sweating is also important because it releases a bunch of hormones that are good for you. It releases a bunch of chemicals like endorphins and serotonin and all of these other things that are really important for maintaining your health. It also helps you do things like sleep better. Sleep is so undervalued. It is actually the time when your body is able to repair itself. It is actually the, it's almost like a flush of your system and where everything in your body is then able to rejuvenate itself and on a cellular level. So sleep is so, 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 so important. And I hope that this really encourages you guys to get the sleep that you not only need, but the sleep that you deserve. A couple of months ago, as I was having this conversation about sleep and rest, I came across this scripture in, um, I believe it was Proverbs. Hold up. Let me look it up. So I found it. And it's actually not a proverb. It's in Psalm. Psalm 127 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. Sleep is a blessing. <laughs> Sleep is an actual and factual blessing. To be able to rest is a gift. And it is a gift that we do not take advantage of often enough. Why? Because we are trusting and believing in our own power more than we are trusting and believing in the way, the will, and the ability of God himself. All right? Like, and when I tell you guys that that was a whole message that I really needed to receive, and it was really something that finally put me and my heart in a posture of surrender and understanding that um, not only is sleep good for me, not only is it necessary, but it is a gift. <laughs> a gift is not something that you have to earn or do anything in order to receive. And when you think about resting in God's presence and the relief that you're able to receive, the freedom that you're able to receive, the joy that you are then able to um, achieve when you're able to do that, it really does make it a no-brainer. Go to sleep. <laughs> And the last thing that I really want you guys to consider in listening to your body and giving it what it needs is understanding that if you do not take care of yourself, no one else will. You can tell other people that you may feel a certain type of way, but they aren't going to feel the pain that you're feeling. They're not going to feel the um, discomfort that you're feeling in a part of your body. They aren't going to be able to really understand um any sufferings that you may be having in your physical because they're not you. The only way to really have yourself taken care of and the only way to know for sure and for certain what's needed in order to um, make sure that you are in your best health is to make sure that you're listening to your body and that you're doing what's necessary to take care of yourself. 
which also includes scheduling your doctor's appointments, okay? <laughs> um, so now that that's all cleared up, I just want us to hold each other accountable, shall we? Let's do that. In the same way, again, because I told y'all, I'm like basically telling on myself as I'm having this conversation with you guys, but in the same way that I want to make sure that I'm going to see my doctors and keeping up with my routine wellness checkups, I wanna make sure that you guys are doing the same. So this week, I will be scheduling a couple of doctor's appointments, things that I've been putting off, things for my back. I've been going to the chiropractor. I'm going to pick that back up. i making sure that my neck is all right and getting massages. I'm going to schedule my dentist's appointment because that is something that has been put off for a while. Um, and I'm going to get my yearly physical because why not? How about you? What doctor's appointments are you going to be scheduling this week? And what are some appointments that you've been putting off? I would really like to know. Now's the time to get it, sis. Now is the time to check in and protect the asset, the asset being yourself. Let me know in the comments on social media um, how many doctor's appointments you were able to get off your mind and onto your calendar. And more importantly, how many of those doctor's appointments you were actually able to get done this week so that you were able to get into the chair, the doctor share that is well guys that basically concludes this week's episode i hope that you enjoyed the conversation that you found it useful and beneficial in some way i hope that it served as a wonderful reminder for you to get your doctor's appointments and um and I really look forward to some of our upcoming conversations. Oh my gosh, there's so many conversations about this Join You to Purpose that I have in mind for you guys. Um, talking about past work experiences and how to make the most of them. Talking about more parenting stuff because Lord knows that that is all a journey um, in and of itself. But also just sharing all these wonderful tidbits and joy gems that the Lord has just dropped on my spirit um, on a con and, and, and that he continues to drop on my spirit on a continuous and regular basis um, just sharing the joy in the journey but also how he is present in each and every single moment of our lives if you like this podcast and if you like this video if you're watching it on youtube please give it a thumbs up and subscribe um, subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and i look forward to joining with you and chatting with you again next week as we journey to purpose one feel good thing at a time until later Mai! <laughs>